Today, NVIDIA launched the RTX 3060, and right at the get-go, I just want to say one thing about AIB pricing, and that's that I don't think it's worth dwelling on anymore. I've covered the overpriced state of AIB graphics cards to death over the past few months, and I think plenty of other tech tubers have as well. The only thing that really needs to be said at the beginning of the 3060 analysis video, any 3060 analysis video, is that to claim this card was ever planned to be $330 has no evidence behind it. And to say it's a $329 card is to state a mistruth. There is no Founders Edition of the 3060 for 330. There are no AIB cards that I've seen selling for 330. This is not straight up this is not a $330 card to say it is or could be is to just i don't know swallow nvidia's marketing mindlessly what this is is a card that's being sold for about 5700 xt prices or at least what they used to be a year and a half ago and it brings actually less performance than that which actually reminds me of what I said in my 6800 XT Nitro Plus review. I thought that graphics card, especially my sample, that clocked to 2.75 gigahertz was incredibly impressive. An excellent card for the right price. But that I just did not feel it was worth $1,000 for almost anyone. And that if that card isn't worth $1,000, something that has half the performance also isn't worth $500. Which... Half, speaking of half of the performance of a 6800 XT, let's get into the results for a little bit here. So I don't have that much to say in depth about its performance. We're talking about a cut down 192 bit card that uses 170 watts. So it's really not increasing efficiency much over the Turing 2060 because it's only bringing about 20% more performance. Indeed, this is proven true even in the laptop edition of the 3060, where you see around a 19% performance increase at the same power usage. Anyone arguing Ampere has moved the bar forward with efficiency over Turing is kidding themselves. At best, Ampere is 20% more efficient than Turing. Well, using a significantly smaller node and... So, I mean, that's all there really is to say about this graphics card in terms of performance. It brings last-gen mid-range performance to the same price points of last-gen. In fact, I'm so underwhelmed by the performance of this graphics card that I'm almost wondering if I need to stop repeating this old adage that I used to like a lot, which is, there's no such thing as a bad product, just a bad price. When I look at the RTX 3060... I'm tempted to say this is just too weak, period, right? From my perspective, either NVIDIA needed to make this a $250 6 gigabyte card and call it, say, I don't know, the 3050 Ti or the 3060 SE, as actually Gamers Nexus covered they were considering doing, or they needed to push this even higher. Now, that conversation's been had before why they didn't make it 250. It really wouldn't make profits or good enough profits at that level so they decided to slap on more ram which again is like six dollars a gigabyte very cheap and try to charge more money even then it doesn't have the performance level i think necessary for a card above three hundred dollars in 2021 right i think that it's quite perplexing from some respects that they decided to cut down the die and that they didn't give it faster memory Truly, I believe this needs about 15 to 20% more performance. And then, well, it actually kind of would have been a fantastic product. They could have even charged $350 and said, hey, we're bringing 2080 level performance with 12 gigabytes of VRAM to the previous 2060 launch MSRP. And the best part of it would have been that they could have produced many more of these cards than what they could with the bigger dies of GA104 and 102. I don't think most people need cutting edge performance. They just want better performance than what a given price was a couple years ago. And they, they want to be able to get it. And the fact that they could have overclocked the snot out of this, who cares if it uses like over 200 watts, given it the fastest RAM and actually had greater capacity to try to satiate this market is a huge letdown that that's not what they did. But I think there are some pretty obvious reasons 
for why they decided to not do that. And the first one is that if it would have been 20% better than what they released today, it would have been dangerously close to the 3060 Ti while having 50% more memory. And let's remember that even worse than being just 10% weaker than a 3060 for more than 10% less money and giving you more RAM, even more damaging to the lineup would have been that it really would have been only around 25% weaker than the 3070 they're trying to sell you right now for up to $600. And so that's why I believe they decided to not do that. And I'm forced to keep coming back to the same conclusion I have to in so many videos over the past few months. NVIDIA massively underestimated RDNA 2. And because of that, they continue to do little things here and there to make the card stronger. I personally believe that they wanted to make the 3060 like a 6 gigabyte $300 car, but then they were forced to give it more RAM, and but not overclock it as much as possible to make the 3060 Ti look bad. I believe we keep seeing more and more examples of NVIDIA launching perplexingly segmented products that on one hand seem overpriced for what they do, but on the other hand have features that make the rest of their lineup look absolutely silly and the rtx 3060 is just another entrance in this list of stupidly segmented cards that will still sell like crazy due to gamer demand and the fact that nvidia is diverting a lot of their capacity both 12 nanometer and which counts by the way and 8 nanometer to miners directly instead of using all of it for cards that could be used for gaming. Even if miners got a hold of these cards, the fact that they could be used for gaming is better than literally trying to make miner only cards that gamers will almost certainly never use for gaming. And so in terms of advising if someone should get the 3060, all I can say is that, look, if you need a card desperately and you somehow manage to get one of these things for $350 or less, then it's fine. Certainly better than the other options out there now that aren't on the used market. And even used cards are selling for absurd prices. But in even a remotely normal year, I really feel like this graphics card is for almost no one. I mean, who has been waiting for RX 5700 non-XT performance for this long and didn't buy one years ago? Likely for the same price or less. Who has been waiting for this performance to come to this price point? And what level of gaming is this bringing to someone that has a 2060 that or 1070 that uh, nothing? It's not bringing any new levels of performance to the price point. And there's been ample time to get this level of performance for this price or less. So no matter how you dice it, I just can't shake the feeling that NVIDIA played this product all wrong. Even if it was too close to the 3060 Ti and 3070, who cares? You can make more of them in one silicon wafer. They should have, even if they charged a bit more, overclocked this as much as possible, thrown efficiency out the window, and given it as fast RAM as possible, so at the very least they can produce as many cards as possible that are around 2080 performance or higher, because I don't think most gamers need more than that level of performance. And it would have made fit things better. It would have helped satiate demand. But unfortunately, that's just not what they've decided to do. And so, well, what could have helped a bad situation at least a little bit isn't being done. And, well, I guess that brings us to AMD, who will be revealing the 6700 XT very soon. If Navi 22 can clock even remotely close to the clock speeds that I saw in my 6800 XT review, so 2.7 gigahertz, and because it's a smaller die that I'm told is getting better yields than Navi 21 even, I think it should be able to. If it can, there is real opportunity for AMD to not only do what NVIDIA should have done, but do it better than they could have done, right? Navi 22 takes up about half the die size of a Navi 21 die on a wafer. AMD really, really needs to switch over some of their capacity that was intended for Navi 21 to Navi 22 and produce as many of these dies as possible with one version of them being clocked as fast as possible to get as close to 2080 Ti performance, except with 12 gigabytes of RAM, 
because that's what this market needs. I don't think most people need something as strong as a 6800 XT. I think something around a 2080 Ti, even just around it, is more than enough for most people. And if you can just make two of those instead of a 6800 or 6800 XT, I think that is what this market really does need right now. And in fact, as I leaked six months ago, not a couple weeks ago, by the way, as I covered six months ago, they could charge just 450 or less for this. And considering it's not as good at mining as Ampere, I think these RDNA 2 mid-range cards could actually be exactly what this market needs. The depressing truth, though, is I suspect there's almost nothing that can be done to entirely solve the current demand problem. I feel like, personally, even if AMD were to produce four times as many cards as Ampere, it may not be enough. They would sell out instantly because of how desperate people are to just play some games right now with something that's new, something that's not last gen performance. Hopefully AMD comes even remotely close to doing what I just described because that is what we need right now. Last gen flagship performance for last gen mid-range pricing, not last gen 5700 performance for fucking 5700 XT pricing two years later. Nobody asked for this. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Just a heads up that Moore's Law is Dead just hit its prior Patreon goal, but we're not stopping anytime soon. We've already got a new goal out where we'll be looking to build a proper studio and then upgrade Broken Silicon on YouTube to be a more visual show for all of you YouTube viewers. We really do need your support, so head over there if you have even just a little bit of extra money, because if you do, you also get a lot of exclusive content every week like tomorrow a look at me and dan co-host of broken silicon's cryptocurrency history we've been involved in it for 10 years and it's it's just an honest look at the mistakes and triumphs we've had over the past decade it is not us just telling you all to hodl and buy it up it's an honest look at what we think about those things and the patrons voted for that subject so yep just remember all of that is there and ex a mountain of exclusive content for those who have just a few bucks a month to support us and additionally if you just want the free stuff from YouTube, well, please remember to subscribe, hit the like button, and share our videos because much more is coming out soon, including a leak of a graphics card a lot of people didn't expect actually existed. It's, it's getting pretty interesting, guys. Much more coming, so don't miss the content coming soon. And as always, as for now, thank you for watching. <laughs>